Then you say, here's Ginger. Story time with Ginger Cook. Hello, Ginger. Hi, John. Today we're going to be finishing our uh, bait shop from Louisiana and dock and boat. And we're going to be talking about more talks about how to sell your art, you know, the art, the art of selling art, you know, things you might not know and you don't want to have to learn the hard way. How's that? The pitfalls, possibly. The pitfalls, absolutely. There's pitfalls and there's some rewards and things you want to look out for. So if you can see here, we're about halfway through with the painting of our, our, our dock. And it's, this, is, uh, this is not a tutorial, but in the sense that I am going to tell you some things you might want to know about painting your art. You could say it's a tutorial on selling art while I'm painting. Okay, we, could, we could say that for sure, right? So um, basically, I'm going to review kind of what we talked about yesterday for those of you who missed it. And this is the kind of thing where you might want to go back and re-watch this video. And um, uh, from yesterday, and you know, just take notes about those things because some of the things I'm telling you are, you know, this is from years and years of selling my artwork all over the world and having publishers and um, and my artwork uh, licensed and on QVC for sale on, on tapestries and and pillows and 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 uh, barbecue nets and uh, you know I mean you can't believe the things that I've done with art licensing. In fact, I used to charge a, quite a course on how to do use art licensing, uh, you know, and how to take advantage of it, you know. But um, uh, for the most part, what I what I want to just sort of emphasize today is that we're talking about. I, I want you to know that I've got a lot of experience doing this. And I can save you hours of, and maybe some real heartbreak, uh, particularly if somebody uh, uh, scums with one of your paintings and you didn't realize that that was even a possibility that, you know, a gallery could just run, you know, close or sell a painting and not tell you. Or there's just so many factors involved here, okay, with uh, selling artwork. And, and then in yesterday, I talked about why you may never want to sell it. This says sometimes selling your artwork can be um, uh, counterproductive to your joy of painting. Because first and foremost, and I say this with great sincerity, first and foremost, you've got to think of the joy you have of painting. All right? And um, if painting's got to give you joy, and sometimes, and I've seen this happen, sometimes is that... Um, uh, when you start selling it, then suddenly um, some of the joy is just gone, all right? And then, and then that's no fun. You know, they've taken the joy out, and there's something, something very joyful about being creative. I don't care if it's a, you're creating a garden or, an, or a painting or, you know, playing the piano or whatever it is you do. Uh, You've got to keep the joy. And, and one of the things we talked about was not taking jobs that don't give you joy. Um, that's really important. Um, and, and we, you know, Sam and I learned this the hard way. Some of you may have heard this, just me saying this in passing. But um, Cinnamon, and uh, back when Cinnamon was in college, um, one of the art galleries I was in, uh, the owner of it came to me. He said he had a, a, a customer who wanted some custom artwork. And uh, would I be interested? And I said, well, what, what does he want paintings of? And he said, well, it's an air conditioning company. They do commercial air, air conditionings for like malls and stuff like that. Not even like people's homes, just that kind of thing, right? And um, uh, he wants, he wants a, a, a uh, so it was eight 48 by 60 paintings. Um, and the money was very good. It was very good. And Mike, our cut on it, the gallery, of course, took 50%. We talked about yesterday, you know, that yesterday about why you can't just, you know, have a heart attack when, some, when, when, when that kind of uh, commission is, is requested, okay? But anyhow, the... Um, uh, so I said, well, what, you know, said, I said, really? And I said, so he said, like what? He says, well, you know, he wants, you know, us you to, you know, paint guys welding and, um, 
you know, and then maybe out in the field, uh, you know, with tractors and stuff. And um, <laughs> you know how I feel about tractors, you guys. You can imagine how I was jumping up and down for this job, right? And um, I said, I don't know. Um, you know, I have a friend uh, named John Douglas, and he's an artist and that does, uh, you know, kind of different kind of artwork than I do, and I think he'd be perfect for this. I think I'll pass on this job and let someone else take it. Okay? So he went back and showed the guy John Douglas's artwork, and he showed him mine. He said, no, I, I like hers. It's colorful. And I'm thinking, well, you know, you're talking about guys sitting in a, in a, in a warehouse welding. I mean, I don't know how colorful <laughs> we're going to make this. I mean, I was, I was really, sometimes you have to just kind of decide, well, how would that, how would that even work? You know what I'm saying? How would that work? Um, I, I, I mean, I was just trying to visualize it, but I said, okay. So then he told me how much money it was, and I thought, well, Cinnamon was going to college at the time, and I, I was going to need to hire her to do, be a professional photographer, and I really didn't want to do this work. But she was doing what she was doing in school, in art school. What she was, um, what she was doing was, um, uh, she did a lot of, you know, they were teaching her to do a lot of. Um, commercial type art. It really was advertising art was what she was taking in college in one of her classes. And so she was pretty good at this, I thought, from what I'd seen of her homework assignments. So, you know, the question came up there, well, um, you know, could we, could we get cinnamon, you know, could I get cinnamon to do it? And, um, and then I'll just, I'll help her, right? So Cinnamon talked about it. She said, oh, mom, you got to take this job. She said, I'll do it. She says, um, uh, you, you can do a couple of them, and I'll do most of them, because uh, she needed the money from, for school. Makes sense, right? Well, the problem is she was at school, and she was very busy, and stuff wasn't getting done um, at all. And I got called in. I'd never been called in on a job before that he was sorry he hired me because we hadn't produced enough stuff. And um, I had a... I was going on a cruise to Alaska. This is back in the 90s. I was going on a, a cruise to Alaska. And I remember doing one 48 by 60 painting like the day before we left on the cruise and was able to send him a picture of it. I mean, that's how fast it was. So, so well, anyway, what we ran into was that, that painting air conditioners and people welding is just not inspiring. And for instance, I, I you know, in order to try to, to make it work, I remember I had this one guy inside a building with this, oh, and you just couldn't flub it either. You had to have the right helmet and all this stuff. It was just, oh my God, it was a horrible assignment. And um, so anyhow, we um, <laughs> really honestly, you guys, you just can't, can't imagine what this was like. So it, 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 anyhow, um, uh, we, there was a guy welding and I had to do something with that. So what I did was I made the floor damp. I'm, John always laughs about why do you like things after the rain because you can do reflections. And I had the red reflections of the torch and all that in the floor. Floor was kind of damp. I don't know, would you get electrocuted uh, welding in, on a damp floor, John? You can if you're not careful, yes. So anyway, I, I put it in there anyway. They didn't, they didn't bitch about that because the painting was really pretty. but. You know, it was probably done, but so, and then like, for instance, um, you know, when, when he had an air conditioning job and Cinnamon went out to the job sites and took all these photos, which was great, right? She took all these photos. And uh, uh, just put a little white paint out here. Um, so, like, for instance, we had to do, an, you know, outhouses on the job. You know, there were some outhouses, and I had some. I tried to do it in the colors of, you know, like in the Thomas Kincaid woods, except they were welding and doing air conditioners. I know. And then he wanted a drinking fountain. That was a challenge, a drinking fountain. Apparently, they did those, too. And what, we, what did we learn from that job? You know, um, don't, just because it's good money is not a reason to take it, because if you know, I'm surprised that Cinnamon dropped, didn't drop out being an art major because she did some of them, I did some of them. Um, we we both agreed that um, it it looked good on paper. 
<laughs> you know, look good on paper, look, look good on the check, but the actual doing of it was terrible. And I was lucky that Cinnamon also was a photographer. I don't know what, because I wouldn't have been able to go out and take pictures of that stuff back then. Of course, that was before cell phones that took pictures. That's how long ago this was. I know. There was a time when Are cell phones. Are you kidding? Yeah, that didn't take, um, didn't take pictures. Yeah, there was. So um, I say I say this with. Um, this is a cautionary tale, on what what you want to avoid. Uh, when you're um, when you're when you're agreeing to a commission, okay. Because um, it can backfire on you, because you just may not want to do it. And of course, I've seen this. You know, for those of you who are new to our channel and don't know this, we have all kinds of tutorials on our channel, uh, over 500 on YouTube. And then we have a, an online art school, and we have more tutorials there, step-by-step -step tutorials. These paintings are, are pre-sold. Somebody's already purchased it. But because I'm painting it anyway, we're doing these story time videos, and then... Um, uh, telling stories. <laughs> there you go. That wasn't so hard to think of, Ginger. Come on. So the upshot of it was with the, 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 when we finished all eight paintings, 48 by 60 paintings, they, they were hung in the lunchroom at work. Oh, we had to put some of the people that worked there in the paintings, too. It wasn't enough that we... Um, that we did these. We actually had to have they gave us photographs of some of the people that had worked at the company a long time, and they wanted them in the paintings. And you're going, no way. And we're going, way. They wanted them in the paintings. So, um, that was a challenge. Um, the whole thing was a challenge, yes and yes. Um, the whole thing was a challenge. And then when then they called Sim and I into the lunchroom and they looked at they, they everybody had done a critique. They let all the employees critique it. Well, if you think that isn't fun, let me tell you something. So if you had the wrong helmet on, hard hat, right? If you had, I had a big uh, bulldozer thingy. And um, if you had the line going to the wrong spot, you just couldn't, like a tree limb, you can pretty much put it anywhere, and who cares, right? But apparently, when you have a hose going from point A to point B, apparently it has to be in the right place, or people go a little wild with the expectation that hasn't happened, right? So, <laughs> um, it was a little bit like when I took up stained glass years ago. I, I decided that you know to to learn how to do it, and you just can't pound that stuff. It has to be cut exactly. If you're not a sock folder, that's not your medium. <laughs> yes, you have to have the right medium. And the same thing with this. I'm mean, just um, this was so disappointing. In that it was just, it was a lot of work. Um, I mean, a cinnamon was very grateful for the, for the money that, you know, helped her in college. So that was a good thing. But um, outside of that, we, um, we both agreed that we would never do commissions for anybody on something we, we didn't feel like painting. That was the kind of the one, that was the lesson we learned from there. And, you know, I can give you more examples of how people have done that. But um, you, you really don't want to, um, you don't want to um, just get caught up in that. Is that, that a good explanation, John, do you think? You just, yeah. you just don't want to get caught up in that kind of stuff. So now that we've covered that you're not going to take any commissions that, um, that you don't feel like doing. In fact, if you stay away from commissions, if you can, and have people just buy the stuff that you've already painted that they like,
that to me um, is very successful. Um, in my humble opinion, it's very successful. And um, just suggest a ladder there. Uh, let's see, I'm going to paint on this for a minute. So, all right, we've, we've decided that. And if you're going to go into an art gallery, you're going to check, check with the other artists that are in there. You want to speak to some. You want to find out when they pay after, after a painting is sold. How long, if a painting is sold, how long is, are they going to wait to tell you? And um, you don't want to frame the paintings before you, uh, you, you want to use a gallery wrap canvas if possible. Because if you, um, it, it, most galleries make their money uh, selling frames. So they don't want your frame. And the other thing we, we mentioned yesterday was that not only do they not want your frame, but um, uh, they, want it, they want to frame it themselves. And so, and, and if, you, if your frame is damaged, if you frame something and the uh, frame is damaged and it gets damaged easily, a little chip here and there, they're going to try to find ways to uh, have you lower the price based on the fact that um, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a little nick on the frame. Or they would have bought the painting if you hadn't had that ridiculous frame on it, whatever. Okay? So don't go to the expense of um, framing things. It's, it's even though gallery wrap canvases are more expensive than the other, <clears throat> um, in the long run, if you're in, if you're selling them, um, you let that be, let the frame be the expense because that's the big expense. I've had people um, buy frames, you know, buy a painting for me. And spend as much on the frame. No, oh, it's the painting, absolutely. It's the painting. There's huge markup in uh, framing. I used to work at a photo store, and then we sold framing. Really? Oh, absolutely. You know, you buy a, a, a stick of wood. I mean, they, they made it all custom, by, but you're buying. What that was? Those things were what twenty feet long, of a mine to the customer for like twenty dollars a foot. Yeah. It basically carried the business. Yeah, it does. It carries the business. So, right. yeah, that's that's something to be aware of is that you yeah, like Ginger says when it comes to the framing, don't don't go there cuz your what you have in mind for a frame or what the person wants is buying the painting. They do not jive. They don't agree. And, and Your tastes are totally different. Yeah, and I, I, uh, and it's interesting because uh, John, John, a lot of times some of the paintings I get finished with them. John will tell you I can't. I don't like them. I just <laughs> those, don't like them. And, and, and those are the fans' favorites. Yeah. You, and so just because you do a painting, and you can't stand it. A lot of times you might not like something because you had in mind to do something and you weren't able to accomplish that. Whatever you had in your little mind and in your mind's eye what you were going to paint didn't happen. Just didn't. Your mind's eye couldn't convey it couldn't, down to the but hands. But something happened and people liked it. Yep. But because it didn't quite happen the way you wanted, you've now decided it's a terrible painting because that's not what you... It's, it's kind of human nature. That's kind of what... Um, I mean, it's sad, but that's what happens, yes? Um, how I lost that. So, yeah, you just don't, you just don't want to get caught up in that. Um, Framing business. I, I have a very good friend, and I have watched her go into a, a store 
and she maybe wants an antique clock or something. And the first thing she looks for is flaws so that she can beat them up on the price. And that's what people do. So um, we also discuss why you would want to take the gallery price and not and not um, not get allow the galleries to have their commissions. They have to pay for rent, lights, all that stuff, and um, they they need you really do need to um, uh, <clears throat> appreciate the fact that this painting wasn't. That 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 they, if that painting may sit in there for or six months before somebody buys it. Okay. Um, we talked about finding the right gallery. So I would say if you want to know more about the gallery sales and how to get into galleries and stuff like that, you might want to consider um, um, putting a. Going back and listening to yesterday's stuff, yeah? Now, so moving on with selling your art. Now we've established that and just the galleries. Um, art trends. Now, I hope you're taking notes on this because art trends <laughs> And, and there, what, there will be a there will be a test at the end. Yeah, there's gonna be a test at the end because art art t trends, and what do we mean by that? What we mean by that is that um, uh, art goes out of style, just like clothes. And if I I can remember some years ago, back in the '80s, for instance, what was really in was. Um, um, Old old trucks with daisies. They couldn't. They they sold as fast as anybody painted them, and then 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 no, then that didn't come back for a long time. And now some old trucks came back for a while, but not with daisies. And um, so, when you think about what you're um, you're painting. Uh, think about what's selling. There's a thought. What are people buying? Yeah? And because that's as important, too, to, to your art journey. Um, and how do you determine what's selling? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I was doing this. I know. Sorry to interrupt you. you no, interrupt me. And because I get I get distracted, yeah. You get squirreled. Well, I do. Interrupt me. I love that movie. That's a great movie. So, um, yeah. So what's what's selling? Well, one of the ways to tell what's selling is to go down to your local furniture store, like a you know high end furniture store, and then go into some place like a Bed Bath and Beyond. I think if they're still in business. Um, High-end and low-end furniture stores, see what people are buying. Target's a good one. Target really keeps up with, and look at the art. Because that's the art people are putting in their house this week. If it's, um, if it's on, in, in the movies, for instance, um, if it's in the movies, maybe, but people don't keep up with, maybe not have seen the same shows. But the, somebody spent hours figuring out where gonna, people were going to buy this year. So you don't have to do that. You just see what they thought and do that. So then the next one is um, colors go out of style. All right? They just do. Colors, colors go out of style um, just the way um, um, whoops, don't want that. Um, just the way clothes do. So once a year in California, they have something called a, um, I don't know what they call it, but it's, a, it's like where the, all the, the manufacturers and stuff, those people, they get together and they determine 
<coughs> what's selling and what's going to sell this year. So they pick the colors and they have the color of the year. Maybe you've seen oh, cinnamon. Yeah. Talk about the color of the year this year. What was the color? Oh, I gotta look it up again. It's, it's, a, it's a beige. Kind of boring. So that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to always paint in neutrals for things you want to sell. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, because if it's neutral, and what, what, what is considered neutral? Well, neutral are, are, are um, earth tones, like browns and beige and browns and blacks and tans and golds and sometimes green, depending on what it is, but th that's that's earthy green. Earthy greens, not okay. circus green. And then, yeah, that's considered. Um, those are considered um, uh, <coughs> those are considered neutral. Um, neutral colors, and so uh, my mother knew this. My mother, I think, you know, my adopted mother, painted. And she learned that a long time ago, that earth tones, she was big on earth tones, man. In fact, um, she was so big on earth tones that when I wanted, when the shag rugs came into popularity, the, the, and I wanted, you know, an area rug for my room that was a shag rug, okay? Uh, she, um, Let's see, I've just got to put some more paint out while I'm thinking. She bought me a beige one. I don't want to, you know, bright reds or pinks or blues or something. When I got a stupid beige one. Because she oh, yeah. everything it's, on our house was earth tone. It's peach fuzz. Yeah? That's the color of the year. <laughs> peach fuzz? Yeah. Okay. Well, everything in our house, okay, was earth tones. And... I gotta tell you, I hated it. I mean, if you think I'm the queen of color, it's just, you know, when you pull the rub, rubber band back far enough, it snaps forward, that's what happened to me. I mean, um, I just want color. Though I understand what she said, because some things are very relaxing about um, earth tones. Absolutely. So, uh, but if you're talking about just wanting to sell stuff, what I imagine you are. Then your your best bet is earth tones. And keep it in beiges. Now if you're talking about something for somebody else, you know, that's different, but you know, for yourself. But if you just just think about just think about that a little bit. So, uh, neutrals. And then you want to know subject, go to those stores and see what people are buying. For instance, um, are you selling for an office? Are you selling for somebody's home? Who, who, where is your market on this deal, okay? Because that's, that's important to know what your market is. Who, who is your buyer? You know, when we do these YouTube videos, well, I remember we went to a YouTube seminar and they said, figure out who your audience is, right? Remember that, John? Yes, absolutely. Who is your audience? And that makes a big difference. Um, and in the case of buying, you know, so again, you've got to kind of be aware of the colors. Now, another place you could go is the um, go up to the uh, bedding department 
in um, department store like Macy's or, you know, go up to the a bedding department. And you'll find that um, that the bedding changes, the bedding colors change less often, but they have a summer bedding and a winter bedding, okay? So your summer bedding, um, those colors, if you paint in those colors, that's a good, that's a good place to start, right, John? Yes. Summer bedding, that's a good place to start. And, um, Winter's okay, too, but, you know, summer's kind of, you know, people are, you know, I guess you could Google, are people more likely to buy a, a new bedspread in the summer, or do they want a winter one? Do they change? Which one do they keep, the, which one do they keep the most often? But towels and bedding, carpets sometimes, too, but carpets don't change for a long time. And don't, you can't be on the latest trends, because not everybody may have caught up with what the department stores think you ought to be doing. I know, but they may not have, right? So, like, for instance, um, I, if you go, for instance, if you buy a, a lamp at, say, Macy's or Target, and then you go into, um, into a Walmart or, a, um, uh, I don't know, some other, some other American department store, if you go into one of those, you will be able to find something that goes with that lamp or that whatever it is you bought or maybe an area rug you maybe find an, a, a lamp that matches or an area rug or something or towels or you know what I mean because they all those stores got together and decided on the colors and so um, I mean this is a this is a pretty nifty thing um, they've decided what it is that that you're going to be wanting to to buy and then they all they all agree on that so that when you um, uh, go to, you know, you buy the one thing, then they can capitalize on the fact that you're going to want to find an accessory. So you may, uh, conversely, and I've said this before, if you go to, say, um, Ikea, which is a European uh, store, department store, European, Nothing they have in their colors goes with another thing you'll find in another American store. They just, because they're based off of their European color scheme, not ours. So if you want an accessory, you better buy it there. If you want a lamp, they certainly, they would have a lamp that would go with them, um, with something else you were trying to buy for sure, right? They'd have that. And, um, the, the, and their rugs will all match. The, the, everything's all um, all goes, and it goes because because all of this was planned out. So that's then you look at their artwork, say in an IKEA. Chances are that's not on trend with what most everyone else agrees people are buying. Make sense? So those are the kind of the words to the wise on buying. Um, uh, buying stuff, uh, you know, and, and selling stuff. So, all right, so now you, to reiterate, you're going to go ahead and, um, you're going to go ahead and um, you're going to make sure that you're, that you're on task with um, what's, what's current, what's in, what, what people are buying. You're going to go to furniture stores and see what, and then, most people want large paintings. Um, you can sell something. For instance, if you did a little kitchen painting, as long as it's not too expensive, you've got a pretty good chance of buying it. We talked about um, impulse buying yesterday, right? So somebody may decide that they want your... Um, that they want your... Um, your painting... And they may decide that they want that because uh, uh, they just love it, and they want it, and it's it's under the thousand dollars or whatever it is that the the price is, and so you you may be okay uh, selling that uh, because of that. All right. 
and and so something cute and fun and you know shipping and all that stuff. So, but if you're talking about big pieces of art, you know, uh, again, getting in an area where there's tourists is important. So kind of we talked about that too yesterday. This is sort of entertaining, John, just fit doing all the little final touches on this painting. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with us and all the comments that, that were made. Um, we appreciate that. Uh, somebody said they'd never seen me paint anything like this. Part of what I'm doing in this um, uh, series of, of commissioned paintings is I'm doing all kinds of things I, I really haven't done before, right? I haven't ever done a boat like this and that kind of stuff. But I can tell you just from the responses that I've got from people seeing it that um, what's in trend this year, and I'll tell you, and those, those who want to know the big secret, what's trending this year is nostalgia. That's of somehow, I think the nostalgia trends, when you turn on the news, and all you find yourself is upset. And you think you hearken back to a time when sanity ruled somewhat <laughs> and people weren't doing crazy things. Like when I went to, to, to for instance, school, I, I never worried that someone was going to come to, a, come, come to a, the school and shoot me. You know? We did have a bomb threat one time, but I never thought that anybody would shoot me. So that's the kind of thing where, that, that's why nostalgia right now is, um, is in. So think about, you know, when you're thinking about, again, what, you wanna, what you're wanting to paint and subjects, you might want to think about some of those things. Okay, so now I've got, Put my little post in. Oh. What was this post thing again, John? I'm sorry, what? What was this post I'm putting in? Oh, that's a secondary post to tie your boat off through the Yeah, end. but what kind of thing is this? kind of interesting. It's got some stuff. What's on there? Because I don't know if I want to do it, if it's just, if I don't know what that is. Well, you have, you have two posts here, is what you have. That's a flag post. You can leave the flag one off. I'll leave that flag one off. I, I put the two posts. Maybe in. I'll just do a post. Okay, just do one. I just think I'll do a post. I'm not gonna. It's just a you secondary can get, post to tie off on. Just, here. just a secondary post, and it sort of comes down here like this, and it ends right here with the um, right there at the end of the boat here. Yeah. Okay. Make sure I've got the right thing in. Now, I had a student that I was teaching to paint. She's just learning. She just really, um, learning is, she had two lessons and never tried it before. And her, her second painting she ever did, you know, um, she sold. And uh, you're going, really? I'm going, yeah, she really did. She sold it. The second painting she ever did. She sold. sold. She sold. And 
you know, I mean, I saw the painting of, you know, come on, it wasn't all that. It was okay, but it was, she, she sold it. And I got to tell you, I was impressed. I mean, I, I, was, I was kind of astounded, too, and I'm not trying to be mean, but I was just going, huh, she's not for kind of money. And, and I said, well, what was the genesis of your sales? What do you think it sold, just out of curiosity? And she said, because I intended it to sell, and I wrote on the canvas, she said, before I ever... Um, before I ever... Um, Started this camp, this painting is sold. That's what she said. And she was very successful in selling her art, not everything, but a lot of very successful selling her art because she did that before she, um, uh, you know, sold anything. I mean, she before she ever started the painting. So uh, there was a, um, you know, I know my daughter Cinnamon has started something, and I didn't do it because she was doing it, but she had started something on her channel, Archerpa, where before she would start the painting, she would, I don't know if she's still doing it or not, but she used to write prayers for people, you know, like Mary in, in, in South Carolina is having headaches, and let's, let's wish her, and she, everybody would write their wishes on their canvases for Mary. Before painting. For their painting. She did it too. And it's a very nice thing to do. It was a very nice thing to do. And I, um, and you know, a lot of times it's it's like um, some some. For years we've been taking over the counter cold medicine, okay. And you know, and paying and that stuff's not expensive. And they've known, apparently, from what I've read. They've known that um, it. Um, it wasn't working. It was pretty much worthless. But the placebo effect was huge, right, on that. And so I say this with, um, if you just, um, you know, you could believe in the power of intention, which I kind of do, but you may not, or just the fact that you're, you're thinking along those lines and maybe someone will buy it. It certainly doesn't hurt, but I suppose if you really thought it was stupid and didn't believe it, I don't know if I'd bother. <clears throat> but one time for an experiment, I wrote on, the, on one of my paintings before I started, I wrote um, uh, on one, one painting, and these were abstracts, I wrote like love, peace, good health, all those kind of words. And then I wrote those and I painted over it. And then on the stretcher bars, you know, back where the canvas kind of wraps over, I wrote the words around the edge so people could see them. And then on this companion piece, I wrote uh, the words uh, <coughs> prosperity, money, wealth, all that stuff. Okay? All that good stuff. And those paintings were sitting in a gallery, and, and they sold almost right away. They sold to a lady, and she wanted me to, I came over to her house. She wanted me to come and, and, and see them. I think I had to hang them for her. And um, I got to tell you guys that these paintings, she had a, she had the kind of house that, you know, there's a, Remember Bomb, the Bombay store in the mall? Remember that um, that furniture store where all the stuff was you know, kind of um, English furniture, heavy wood furniture, kind of something you might have in a mansion in India, you know, if you, before you went on safari or something, that kind of furniture? And she wanted these two abstracts. And, oh, my word, they didn't go. They just didn't. I mean, not even close. And she had to have the paintings. Well, there you go, right? She had to have the paintings. And sometimes you don't know why people are attracted to a painting or another and whether 
you wrote some fancy words on it or not, but it couldn't hurt, right? On the back? It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. I'm putting in my finishing touches on the water here, and I gotta do a rope, and <clears throat> I think I can, let me just dry everything real quick. John's not muting the dryer, so here we go. Hey, we'd like to thank Sally for a donation that came in. Thank you, Miss Sally. Thank you, Sally. So I appreciate will it. I add you to the donation, and you get a couple of tickets in your old fishbowl. Why don't you explain what that fishbowl is, John? People always have been asking if they not regular What's viewers. It? You don't know what the fishbowl is? Yeah, some people don't know. It's impossible. <clears throat> we do a quarterly drawing for one of Ginger's paintings. Um, we make donations in the amount of $25 or more during the quarter. Every $25 you donate gets you a ticket in the fishbowl. And at the end of the quarter, Ginger reaches her hands out and into the fishbowl and fights the fish away and grabs a ticket out. And that person gets to pick one of the paintings available. We usually have three, four, or five <coughs> available depending on what you got. <coughs> Yeah, to pick from, and the first drawing gets the choice of the choice, yeah. and then the second, and then the last person, you know, gets theirs. And so that's that's the fishbowl. It's really a brandy. And it can, you can be one lady just d donates, um, uh, you know, like ten dollars a month, and then she has at least one ticket. You know, yep. she just gets it on an automatic payment thing going, so she yeah, doesn't have to think about it. Yeah, we do. We, yeah, we appreciate that very much. More than you know. Oh, yeah. So, uh, see, it's hard to decide what, you know, God will do a lot of things, what to do next. See, that's some blue with that. Story the 4th of uh, January. What's that? Story the 4th of January. I know. My birthday's on the 1st of Was February. Was that a hint to remind me? It's almost here. And we just had Christmas, so, you know. know. It was a bum, you know, my son-in-law, well, this, we're, we're talking about art sales. We're not going to go off on tangents no, about birthdays. No, let's not go off on tangents. Let's say focus I have here. A, I have a pretty good story about one of my birthdays. Where, um, and you know, it's almost sad, so I don't want to. <laughs> but, you know. Um, see, I got to get some zinc white. And we were talking about selling your art. So, you know, you could do that. Now you could just post it on your art. You could just do a new Facebook page for your art. You could do a. Facebook page for your art, can't you, John? Absolutely. Just consider doing that. That's just a Facebook page. That's just your art. Um, you know, now uh, if you want to show it on like Instagram or Twitter, places like that, might be as well as in a gallery. Um, here's here's a ca caveat for art galleries. If you get into an art gallery, they are not keen on you selling your artwork online anymore. Because what happens is, but when in the old days, and and really we are talking about the old days here. In the old days, um, if, for instance, if I had an art gallery in New York, and uh, say my gallery in Hawaii was selling something, people didn't have a way to access the gallery in, in Hawaii. They weren't shopping. But now, if you're selling online, the and the world is your the, audience, and, the, and you might and you undercut that gallery, you'll be gone in seconds. Yeah. 
you know. People are going to try to, and they will. I mean, I had that happen to me. People tried to, even though I wasn't, um, people just tried to figure out where my other artwork was to, so they could get a better deal. And so um, let's, you know, we, and we have to talk about our art being sold by the pound. Do you guys know about that? Art sold by, no. Art being sold by the pound. It's called paint, art, artwork by the pound. Well, if you remember, um, I told you I had an art agent, and we'll talk more about her in another um, video. But she sold artwork. She would buy artwork from, say, China that was being mass produced in like a factory, like cars. One person would paint the boat, someone else would paint this window, and they'd just move on down the line, right? And it was called um, Art by the Pound. And you could go and you could, they would have shows where you could go, you could go pile to this big stack, maybe three feet tall of, of just big 48 by 60, 30 by 40 paintings. And then with a piece of plastic in between, you pull it, just keep going through the sheets. And, you know, and so the galleries would, they could buy that. Most of them weren't signed, sometimes they were. And, um, I remember going to one of those uh, places where they were selling the art, okay? And um, uh, and and it was so cheap, it was like ten, fifteen dollars. I could buy a big painting. It was beautiful. I mean, I bought some, bought some of some Paris. It would have taken me hours to paint. They're gorgeous, right? Nothing wrong with the artwork, except there was just, you know, they just kind of mass produced over and over again. And the one I, ones I bought weren't sold. And just for an experiment, uh, don't, don't yell at me, right? <laughs> uh, the larceny in me took over, I think. And so for fun, um, I uh, put this painting in uh, one of my galleries that was a friend of mine. And um, I signed the painting O. Henry by O. Henry because O. Henry is a famous, he's, he's a, was a famous American author. So um, people so going, not? I think I've heard of O. Henry. Like, I can't think where. <laughs> okay. I think I've heard of him, right? Haven't you heard, haven't you heard of, haven't we heard of O. Henry? Oh, yeah, for sure. We, we know who O. Henry is, right? And um, thus a... Um, uh, the painting sold almost immediately. And the mark, I, I, you see why the galleries do it. And you as an artist, you might go in the gallery, you get to recognize them. Because most of these paintings that come from China, you know, the, you know, Americans read from left to right, and Chinese read from right to left. And so when you as an artist, as a viewer, come into a painting, you're coming in here, ch -ch 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 -ch. But their paintings, their designs usually are this way. Interesting. Just a thought. Small little things that maybe would be helpful for you to know. It's true. And uh, how we read is how we enter a painting. Yeah. So that's the way that you know. That's the way you can know. So as an artist, and a lot of times, so even in Hawaii, one of the most expensive art galleries, I think, very hoity-toity art gallery in Hawaii. Oh, uh, in the back, you know, it was in this hotel, fancy hotel, like a Western hotel or something. They had um, they had that artwork by the pound in there, and you know, selling it off as, as great artwork, and people just don't know. Um, they just don't. I mean, they think it's pretty. So you're kind of competing against that too, right? And then, uh, you know, if you remember that, um, uh, well, here's a, here's a great example. Um, my uh, second husband, George, 
Cook, right? That's where I got the name. Second husband, right? George Cook. Um, he was supportive of my artwork in the sense that he thought it was nice that I painted, okay? But he wasn't so supportive of, of my artwork that even after we stopped using the garage as, as for real estate, three-car garage, a huge giant room up here, that he ever set it up for me as an art studio. Wasn't that supportive, <laughs> okay? That just seems stupid to me. Well, it was stupid because I was supporting us, right? Was stupid, but you know, I don't know if it's jealousy or what it was, but just anyway, he came to me and he said, Listen, I was just driving down the road and there's some people selling you, you, you copies of Chinese art and they're selling your artwork. And I got to tell you that I didn't believe him because I didn't think he could pick my artwork out in a lineup. You know what I mean? There was like 10 paintings. He wouldn't be able to tell you which one was mine. Okay? That's how much I thought he knew about my art for him to, you know, say that. Okay? So I got in the car and I drove down the street. And sure enough, there was a... A, a, it's a guy in a van, he had all this art out, and um, and the, it was direct copies of my artwork that they were selling, direct copies, not even trying to ch change it. And the, the thing about it is, is that it wasn't just art, my artwork that I recognized, it was, uh, I had a brush somewhere, I wonder where it went. Hmm. As we're talking here, where did the brush go? Hello, brushy. Did you, sometimes, did you ever have your brushes that sort of drown in the water? And then yeah, you don't see them anymore? The floor. Well, better than on the floor. It's kind of drowned in the water, and then you don't see the little tips sticking up, right? So, uh, anyhow. They were selling my artwork. And... Um, and they, they were some Americans that had probably gone somewhere to one of those places by the pound, like I did, and thought, we can make a living doing this. It's great. We'll just sell this artwork, you know. And um, now it's uh, in Texas. Uh, back then, you could do that. You could buy birdhouses on the side of the road. You buy stuff, okay? But um, uh now you you couldn't sell it. I mean, you could sell it somewhere, but it wouldn't be on the side of the road because you just couldn't do it. So I went up to him and I noticed that there was a, that one of the one of the publishers that um, that I recognized that from New York Expo. This guy was like, I had some international fame, absolutely. He had like hundred times more international fame than I did, and they were copying his artwork too, and. I knew a little something about the people that ran that gallery in New York. And, and to give you an idea, I ended up having um, lunch with them one time, or dinner after an art, big art ex expo up at, um, um, and um, they were sit sitting there telling me, the owner of the gallery was telling me that um, uh, that the average artist was over in 10 years. Whatever it was, they were over, and they were looking for somebody else. Really? Yeah, that's a 10 years. That was their average, 10 years. And they had, but they were, they fiercely protected their artists. I remember one of them came to my booth at Art Expo because I painted in the style of this one artist. I wasn't copying him. But, you know, I, was, I did like his style, and I was certainly taking advantage of the fact that he had a great sty style, yeah? <laughs> so I remember he came over personally to look at it and then compliment me on the artwork, as you see. Somebody said, oh, that Ginger Cook, she's over there copying your stuff. And actually, in, in all fairness, I wasn't, but um, it could have been perceived as that. Um, you don't go to an art, you don't go to an, um, a... Uh, a big art show in New York, and, and and then knock off the other artists. You know, just who, who you just don't do that, right? So, 
Anyway, I, I recognize that one of these guys has paintings there too, which was pretty, you can imagine, pretty shocking, yeah? So, and I told, I said, you know, I, my publisher in uh, Canada is shutting down people like you that are copying the, the, the artwork. And, you know, you're copying my stuff, and I appreciate it right now, and I pointed out if you would quit selling that stuff, okay? But I said, this artwork over here, this artist belongs to this Soho gallery in New York. And not to tell tales on a search, they're not going to sue you. They're just going to, you're just, they're just going to, people are going to just look for where the last, your body, you know what I mean? The, the, these are New York people, and they're very scary. <laughs> I kind of exaggerate a little bit. I said, hey, you could quite frankly end up just on the, on a, on a milk carton, right? <laughs> just and um, come on, why not, right? Put the fear of God in him, right? I'm not, I'm not saying that that's what happened, but it sounded good, didn't it, John? Absolutely. It sounded absolutely excellent. Yeah. So uh, anyway, um, there is that, and, and even John and I found one of my paintings that I, we had done. Um, at, um, at Walmart as a paint by numbers kit, what exact with my name on it, the picture. Yeah, they didn't even take the name off of it. They didn't even take the name off of it, and you know we just was just too tired to do anything about it. We could have, should have probably, but you know we got some. We're busy, man. We just you can't. I guess what I'm telling you is you can't. There's always going to be some of those people, but like for instance, my, uh, you know, our friend on. Uh, Daniel Elliott, for instance, he will not put his stuff on Pinterest because he doesn't want it copied, and he feels it will copy. So you, when you post stuff online like Etsy's or Pinterest, there are people that really believe that um, that Pinterest is like a shopping cart. It's like a um, for art. Oh, I saw this on Pinterest. I'll just I'll paint it. No one will care. Well, someone might have cared. You know, <clears throat> people do that, but really, should they? <coughs> Sorry. That's the big question. Should they? Um, for instance, if you're looking for some, just some some reference references, free references, I've told people to go to paintmyphoto.com, and those are photographers from all over the world, just amateurs, and that um, and if you, you 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 have permission to paint their photos, you can't you can't turn them into prints or you know they have all these rules, but you can you can. Um, if you're just looking for references, and there are other free reference photos online, right, John? Yes, there's well, lots of them. So uh, there's really no no excuse to just go up to Pinterest and just knock people off on Pinterest. No, I don't really think. Isn't. I personally don't think. You know, that's just me. Uh, you can be inspired by Pinterest. There might be a trend. If something, just like the department store, if something's getting a thousand views on a Pinterest, that might be a subject you want to take a closer look at. Yes, for yourself. So I think I'm just about uh, ready to wrap this up, John. You think? I'll just, I don't uh, think so. Let's, um, let me see where else I'm going with this. I have a few little more things to do, but almost. What are you seeing I'm not, I'm missing? A couple of uh, ropes coming off that. Oh, yeah, the ropes, yeah. Oh, yeah, the ropes, yeah, the ropes. <laughs> the ropes. Sorry, being a boater person. Yeah, boat person. You just... Uh, you know these things. Where's my rope? Oh, yeah, and there's even a little buoy here to draw that little buoy in. That's what that's called. Not, it's not a, a buoy. Bumper. It's a bumper. John and I have these. <laughs> not a buoy. <laughs> it's not a buoy. It's a bumper. Well, you know, uh, but, they have said, you know, I've heard this said. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this said. I've heard this said that if you're in a relationship, a new relationship, and you're dating somebody, and you want to know, what kind of person they are really, go out for an afternoon on a boat with them. Rent a boat and go out for an afternoon on the boat. And um, um, you try to survive. Try to see how they react. Because you, if you, you can see more guys 
will just scream and yell and throw temper tantrums <laughs> in a marina. That you know, it's just it's where they're mo most likely to lose their temper is doing that. I know that sounds crazy, but um, you did. That is just crazy talk. Um, it's it's true. Um, I don't think I've ever thrown a tantrum as a. So, uh, yeah, that's that's one of the. Okay, I gotta paint my buoy in here. You know what? I gotta paint my um, bumper. Yeah, it's better. I've called those buoys my whole life. Well, I'm wrongly say... so, but nonetheless, <laughs> it's hard to treat well, you. Somebody had to do it, and it had to be you. Somebody had to. It's hard to treat a. Um, so, uh, oh no, not a short one today, Ginger. We want to hear more. Yeah, it's kind of interesting about the, you know, the, the. Well, you got to admit some of this stuff is, you know, kind of interesting. I mean. Uh, you know, getting getting knocked off, and you know, there's only so you can, there's only so much. There's really nothing you can do about China. No. It just I just give up and um, shake your head. You know, I guess I should be writing on my um, paintings. This painting is exclusive to me, right? Something like that before I start not to, it. Yeah, not to the China market. Just not, you know. But I don't want to focus on on that either, because I think what you think about sometimes. You know, Could may be not be thing. what you, you want to do, right? Um, just saying. So, uh, this has got a rope coming up here. I don't think I need this rope here. It's just coming through here. I could have one just kind of coming down, but I don't think I need a rope. Maybe just something like that. Maybe to the back of this boat. What do you think? Over here? With a little stick here? Could it come be coming there? You boat person, you? Well, I'm looking at what you're doing. I'm not sure why you would have one over on that particular small well, boat. Well, I don't think you, I need a... I don't think you know, I need just a... Have it, just have it laying down in the water. Oh, uh, well, then it might sink. I don't know. A rope will not... Get, put a rope on there. Ropes, <laughs> ropes, don't, ropes don't sink? Not when they're tied to the pole. They don't? No. They'll go down, but they're not going to go down to the... You're crazy. You've been a crazy girl. That's all there is to it. Okay. Gonna widen this boat up a little bit here. Okay, I can do this, maybe. So, so then you know, do, do you put it? Do you put it on? A, uh, so then it comes down to pricing and how much to charge for something. And I think we talked a little bit about that yesterday, but people want to charge for their time. You don't want to do that. And um, For instance, you could even charge by the square inch, but that to me isn't a good thing because, for instance, a painting like this is a lot more detailed. I can do a painting like this in 10 minutes, or I can you know, take several hours to do it. And... Um, you know, it all depends, right? Um, let's see, looking for blue. Uh, oh, here's a blue. What is the rope on the pole? Where is it being tied? The rope yeah, just, you know. You have to know boating. A bigger boat would want to be tied off onto the pole to keep itself from the dock. It's just another way to, in a higher winds or something. 
Right now, the little boat doesn't need it, so the rope's just laying in the water for the next guy that comes along. You guys, you guys spend time around marina people. John spent his youth, his misspent youth. Hey, I worked in a marina for years. I was a good fork truck driver, drove the boss nuts. Yeah, okay. So, um, all right, so let me just go back and hit my lights and darks, maybe work on the tree a little more. I'm pretty happy with the dock. Um, I don't see uh, my birds in there yet. Oh, yeah, the birds. There were see, birds. I had to say that for you. Yeah, there were birds back in here, too. I, I remember, yeah, there were birds. There. there was a chair here, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to put it in. I kind of like my barrel. I like the barrel. I don't want to distract from the barrel. The barrel's I think, nice. I, I think the barrel's kind of nice. Yeah. So, um... Uh, PJ grew up water skiing. He did that too. Water skiing and scuba diving. That's them. Look at them. There's three. I can do. No. 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 We're just. I think three birds is nice. <laughs> kind of goes, doesn't it? Yes and yes. So Pete. Ah. Uh. PJ got the bumper. She did? Yeah, she understood the bumper. Good, because I didn't, but good, PJ, because <laughs> I just a don't buoy. know. But There's a buoy on the side of my boat. <laughs> well, I mean, oh, sometimes I just... Oh, you're so funny. You know, when, when, when we had that, um, you know, when we were doing those air conditioning things, right, I had to ask George what that stuff was. What is this? He'd go, what, this stuff? He'd go, though... You know, it, it really helps to know. And then one time when I was, um, I got a commission. I had an art agent. And we got a, um, uh, let's see, I want some gold ones down here. That's right. You're right. I had a few little more things to do. And, um. There was this air conditioning, uh, not air conditioning, that was the other one. There was this um, industrial company up in um, Dallas, and they sold um, uh, railroad cars and um, tankers and um, all kinds of weird stuff. If you think the, um, the air conditioning thing was a challenge, you, could, you won't believe what these people did. And on another story, I'll have to tell you, some of you may have heard a little bit about it, but... And it, uh, the the um, the man was a billionaire, millionaire, and um, he wanted uh, artwork. This his dad he inherited the company from his dad, yeah. And his dad um, didn't believe in all that, so he was remodeling the whole office, and. Um, uh, I remember asking, and he was buying artwork for for the you know for the boardroom and all that stuff, right? And my friend, my agent, you know, had the commission to do it. And so, uh, um, I painted under five different names. Five different names. Because yeah, because he wanted different artists oh, doing right, it. Didn't yeah. want the son, didn't want the same artist. But you ever heard the same fish, um, a rose, and any other name is still a rose. That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. He was connect. He was attracted to my artwork regardless. But and he couldn't tell that the five paintings looked the same. No, because they were all different. I was doing abstracts. I was doing all kinds of stuff, right? And. Um, Stuff I had no idea what it was. I just turned it upside down and painted because I, I didn't even know what this, any of the stuff was that he was selling. Even you know it was so different. And uh, uh, for instance, I sold under von Herberg, which was my maiden name, and and Johnson. And um, I'm not sure if I used oh Henry. I might have. That was a good one, right? <laughs> but he he was. He, he knew the, the Queen of England, and he was 
the, the story I got was, and I swear to God, was what my agent told me was that he he wanted to, he was a um, amateur videographer and he was so impressed with with Johnson's paintings that he wanted to um, to meet Johnson and maybe video me painting something. Um, he was having a big party with some royalty coming out from England. The word I had was that it was the Queen, and he wanted me to come to the party. And of course, I, Johnson didn't exist. Cook did. He had a few cooks, but he was he didn't want to invite Cook out. He wanted Johnson. <laughs> And the gig would have been up, right? So I, I didn't get to go. But that was when I, you know, I, I realized that there was a peril in, uh, in, in signing. You know, I never did that again where I signed different names. Okay? Never, never did that again. I could see where that could just get you into big time trouble. And even though it wasn't illegal, I mean, look at O. Henry, um, you know, Mark Twain and everybody and Samuel Clemens, you know, he... Um, he certainly, um, uh, you know, wrote under different names, and of course, artists do. And then I think of the of the author, um, the lady that did. Um, let's see, was it Vampire Lassat? Right, her. Uh, you remember her? The, you know, the Diary of Vampire. They made a movie. Well, this lady. Um, under a different uh, author's name, wrote pornography. Seriously, she did. I know, you're so shocked. I know, I'm just, she did, she wrote pornography. And I mean, and not just any kind of pornography. I mean, it's the kind of stuff that, you know, I gotta say this to you guys, because we're all friends, right? I have to say that if I had a thought like that, just saying, I wouldn't, there wouldn't, you couldn't hide that. How, how would you want anybody to know you even had that thought, right? Let alone put it in a book for someone else to read. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, it's like, you know, to me, it's like when the kids write a journal about how they want to kill somebody. Um, worse than that. I don't know. But again, she, she wrote um, the very good vampire novels. But then she also, you know, had this weird kinky stuff that she was writing and doing very well with that, too. So you don't know. Um, it's just best to just pick a name, stick to it, and go. Um, and go with it. And go with it. This is where people just don't take the time to do the details in it. It's all of the details. Yes and yes. Um. You don't have to have perfect trees at first, but you can put you can put the blue back if you lose it. That's the trick, is just be prepared to do that. So Sally's getting this, right? Yeah, I believe it was Sally. I hope okay. someone made a note of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Sally. So Sally, I hope you enjoy this painting. Sally, let us know. You want any other changes? You want a tractor in it? You say she wants a tractor in it. Plus her little heart. Uh, there, we, these are not paintings on demand. <laughs> there are paintings that I feel like doing. Did you misunderstand that? They are, they, they are not. There's no, um, no requests. It was just a suggestion. It would look so nice with a tractor. Oh, I know, John. I'm going to have to paint my own tractor. Okay. Um... Boy, just the tiniest little things you just got to do. Well, you might want to get a frame ready for me. I might want to do that? Yes, if you is would that be a so kind. That, no, that's, I'm telling you. I Ooh, think that's, you that's a queen's order. Yeah, get a frame ready, you. <laughs> get a frame ready, you. Oh, okay. I'm seeing this now. Isn't that funny? When you, the longer you paint something, the more you see. 
This is actually an open window here. It's opened up, so I had to bring that down so you could tell what that was. And acrylics, this is why I like to do these overnight because acrylics dry darker. That's true. Tora painted me a tractor with a gnome on it. She did. I thought it was cute. It was cute. Terror yeah, my kid didn't vote for it. Yeah, yeah no, it was adorable. Who, who, who couldn't like that, right? That was imp Apparently, the judges. Well, that's what you get. What do you have, a 12 by 16? Yeah, yeah 12 by 16. 12 by 16. What, what move this, this out one? of here, out of the way. Um, oh, that's a simple, elegant one. This is a documentary one. Let me just throw it on there. For, that's not, what size is this one? What is that? That's huge. That's a 11 by 14 or something. Well, 12 by 16. This is 9 what by is 12. This? This Who's is, got a tape? Family? This is not Chester? 9 by 12. Oh, this is 9 by 12. Didn't I say 12 by 16 and you said yes? Uh, well, I don't know what I said. Did well, I say yeah. that, you guys? I, I, I disavow any knowledge of saying that <laughs> if I did. Yeah, okay. So I that's our standard gold I have browns. no idea if I said it oh, or not. Do you think of brown uh, on that one? I think the brown on that one. Um, yeah, maybe brown would be pretty. I'm not thinking of brown. Um, All right, I got it. Okay, put it in the frame so that... Um, is it dried? Yes, yeah, good enough, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Let's pull my pin out. Okay, so John's gonna put this in the frame so we can see it. And then I'll finish the final touches when it's in the frame. Sometimes I, there's just a lot of visual noise around me in the studio, just. <laughs> Is that what you're calling me now? Visual noise, yeah, all this stuff in here. And so I put it in the frame, it sort of makes me focus um, on oh, the painting. Oh, look at that. I'd love to. <laughs> We'd love to, John. Look Somebody at that. got paint on my frame. You don't know anything about that, do you? Well. Mm. Oh gosh. Huh? That. <sighs> well, okay. Look at that, you guys. That is that. That Nine is. Nine by twelve. Uh, it is. That 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 we're happy with. That's a keeper, look at that. Yeah, that's a keeper. So. These are just tiny little. Ooh, Lorraine's suggesting that I go on strike from washing your brushes and cooking until a tractor's painted beautifully. Uh, well. <laughs> he, he likes eating. <laughs> yeah, try to blackmail the queen. It ain't going to work, guys. Mm. Yeah, it's a nice one. I can't think what we're painting up next. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I'll we'll have to kind of wait and see because I've got the... Um... Let me check our list, our shopping list. Let's see. Just see where I'm putting a few little more darks and stuff down here toward the bottom. But we're, uh, I, I, I'm telling you what, I've been in, I'm very much enjoying chatting with you while painting these. And um, I want to thank everybody for hanging out with us. And I hope you learned a little bit about selling your art. Sometimes there's just stories of, a lot of these uh, painting um, uh, things are stories of my life because I've had a rather unusual life. And um, people like to hear the stories about what happened. But uh, this, for the most part, is uh, uh, it's 
kind of, I guess it's like a, a, what do they call this? Like a, not a blog, is it? What, what do you call that? Well, what you're doing now? N yeah, talking and painting and all that. Story time? Story time, but there's a, what's a word for it, I thought. It's not story time? It's story time, but it's also, I don't know, podcast kind of thing. Visual podcast. Isn't it? Isn't that, am I wrong there? Not, not, not that? It's like a live podcast, but it's a video cast. But it's a video cast, yeah. It's video a VOD class. Kind of a video a podcast. A vidcast. Yeah. So it is. All right, I think I will sign it right down here. What do you think, John? Uh, where are you putting it? Right here. Yeah. I think we'll sign it here, and we want to thank you guys for hanging out with us. Um, and thanks for all the fish. Thanks for all the fish, and thanks for everybody that participated in our um, renewal, um, at membership renewal on our academy. Uh, if you're interested in learning how to paint water, we have a wave and water master class. It's just nothing but paintings about tutorials step by step about water. That can be it's kind of interesting too. Yes and yes. It is. So, um, the red slash will go through there later. But now I've got this pen out. I can. Do a couple of those that I didn't quite get before. The little touch-ups. Yeah, you never know when you think you've got it and then you don't. Okay. Fun. We'll see you tomorrow for another story team. Maybe if we have, if we're able to um, get Come the time to do another, it. Another great classical point painting. Yeah, and listen, thanks for watching, and love it. You love it, the comments, and uh, if you've had some experiences about selling your art, maybe you've got some things that you've run into, too, and we'd like to share them on the show with others. You think people might uh, find that helpful, too? Well, we'd love to, um, I'd love to hear those. And, of course, your comments are very much right. When you make a comment, YouTube notices, and it just helps. When you share these videos and put them in a playlist, and YouTube note, takes a note of that. And, We're trying um, to get YouTube to recognize that we really exist. Yes, and it, it, it helps with the search engines, you know, when you do that. So trying to reach a broader audience. Yeah, and more people than just, you know, and we are getting some new people, which we've noticed. Which we do appreciate. Yeah, and if you're new, we thank you for joining us. If One lady wrote me and said that, you know, she can't, couldn't waste her time watching these because she needed to learn to paint. And she had health issues, and I, I feel like she was under the clock about ticking about how much paint she could, paint could do. And we understand that. You can learn a lot just by watching. But, you know, we have over 400 videos on YouTube, step-by-step -step videos. It's not like we're short of these. I, I um, think I gave you one to show people, but we never yeah, had that. Yeah, but that came and went today. Well, we'll show it tomorrow. That's what tomorrow's are made for. That's it, you know. So here we go. So, all right, enjoy your painting, Sally, and thanks for being a, a member of paintingwithginger.com. Thanks, everybody, and we will see you possibly tomorrow.